And uh, good morning. We're here at the Boston International Antiquarian Book Fair 2019 at the Hines in Back Bay. And um, we're here with Marco Pinella, Auger Down Books. Welcome. Thank you. Good Thank to see you. you. Good to see um, you as well. It's Saturday at the fair. How was it your is. Friday? Um, it was good. It was Wonderful. good. Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, we're going to just get started with a little bit of the, the basics. Um, you're based in Vermont, what mm -hmm. city? Uh, Marlboro, Vermont. Marlboro, Vermont. City is a generous term. Ah, kind of town okay. of uh, 600 people. So. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. Is that okay. Bellows Falls? It is, yeah. South of Bellows Falls. Okay. Yeah. The small town here Small in town, yeah. And we're, we're going to talk a little just bit about the, the beginning of Marco before we get to the beginning of Auger Down. Okay. You were born in New England? <coughs> born in Vermont, mm -hmm. yep. I lived, uh, lived in Vermont until I went to college. I, I studied uh, history and photography at Brown and RISD, so it's kind of oh, nice. gave me the spark of what would become my business. Quite a spark. I was just at Brown the other day, and oh, yeah. uh, I was sparked and inspired. It's yeah. It's, it's a yeah. It's a nice place. It's yeah. a nice place. Yeah, yeah. I enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> it is, I know, and it's only gotten harder. So, um, how did you get from Brown and photography and uh, history? Did you have anything in between that? Um, and yeah, where you are now? I did. I was um, a musician for a number of years in my 20s. Okay. I lived on the West Coast. Uh, then I moved back the East Coast to Philadelphia, mm -hmm. um, worked at a record store for a while, kind of ran a record store, um, and then kind of moved into book, books from records. Okay. Um, How did you sidestep into that? What was your the um, first things you started buying that were, were not vinyl? Yeah, um, we had um, a large collection of jazz records come in with a very large paper collection attached to it, and I was kind of looking for a way out of the record store. Okay. so. I traded my share of the record store for this large I collection of uh, a jazz ephemeral Stop archive. Yeah, that's pretty, it was, yeah, that's it was, pretty exciting. So, yeah. what did you do? How did you? How did that proceed into actually a business? Um, well, I um, sold it. Sold the material to two ABA members okay. uh, in two chunks, and um, as it came available, and I, uh, I kind of had a little seed seed money to mm -hmm. start, and I started kind of. As a more of a generalist, I didn't know much about rare books kind of when I got into it. I had like a liberal arts background, mm -hmm. and then I kind of, you know, I mean, I, I collected a, a few little things. My grandfather was into books. My, uh, my wife's uh, grandfather was a poet, and he had a book oh, collection. Wow. So I had a little, I had exposure to the universe, but mm -hmm. not, kind of not this, not yeah. this universe. So yeah. I kind of. It's a special galaxy. It is. <laughs> it is, yeah. So I, um, I met people through, um, like, auction houses and okay. I met a lot of uh, you know colleagues here mm -hmm. um, by uh, you know and then eventually they nominated me for the ABA as uh, I think to get them to leave leave them alone <laughs> get me to leave them alone no, no. <laughs> no, no they, really. they saw they saw a good thing <laughs> had you been doing some of these I mean you're in Vermont you've got like throw a rock and you've got a great right. fair to do whether local with like Marvin Getman fair people often talk about doing some mm -hmm. of the shadow fairs had mm -hmm. you explored that? Um, trade? I did. I did. I did the Boston Shadow Fair two years ago, okay. and then um, yeah, yeah, they're great. I mean, they're 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 very. Uh, I think they give a good introduction to the trade for yeah, people. Yeah, they and teach so many things, and yeah. let you kind of see on the ground what the market wants. Right. Which is right. Pretty telling, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I'm assuming that um, your specialization is um, not jazz or uh, well, uh, American kind of social cultural history. Okay. Uh, usually through images or, or archives or, or okay. you know primary source material, mm -hmm. but mostly American 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 focused American okay. American culture. Okay. Art. And I'm gonna guess the markets responding well to that. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I've I've been very lucky. That's wonderful. Um, and yeah. when you were looking from the LP side into this book business side, was there anything in particular that that attracted you or drew you in to this world that um, let you make that switch? Yeah, I mean, there's just, I mean, I love music. I, you know, you see every record, I mean, you know, it, there are only 50,000 of them or something. So it's yeah. like, even if you love, even if music is your first love, you're going to mm -hmm. see you know, you can keep hunting around and maybe you'll find one or two you didn't know about, but you know, this world is, wow. there's there's a lot more to explore. You have all world history and yeah. cultural history, it's so it's endless. kind of like endless. A yeah. learning curve is also perpetual. Yeah. You know, yeah. so for somebody who's curious, it's it's pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, not to say music. Music is also endless, but it's you know the stuff that you can that you have access to is mm -hmm. is more limited. You know, I would say the the um, you know you don't see the outer outer reaches of kind of music unless you find a really great collection or something. Mm -hmm. But but. Um, so now here, the world is your oyster. Um, in those early years. Uh, maybe the last couple of years doing, this is your second year doing the Boston mm -hmm. Book Fair here in the Heinz. Um, what are some of your favorite moments or <coughs> earliest recollections that, that stand out to you? Um, I don't know. Everyone's been so friendly. I don't know. I, I, uh, it's all been, it's all been, you know, good, good vibes. I don't know. Isn't There's like it's shocking like shocking the level of collegiality? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I, I mean, I had some exposure to that fr just from other people I knew here and mm -hmm. I, um, you know, uh, Brian and Christine are good friends of mine, mm -hmm. Appledore, and they, I, I would, before I did the shows, I would come here and visit them and stuff, and they were always, they've always been very supportive. Um, Had supported you, the people built friendships, anybody in a mentorship capacity or somebody that had also had an influence on you? Did um, you did you go to any of the seminars or schools I, for this or just dive in? I didn't. I mean, I, I studied a lot of catalogs, mm -hmm. and uh, I would say, you know, I've, yeah, I've read a lot of bookseller catalogs. I would, so my first years doing it, I would pay attention to, um, you know, Tom, Tom's catalogs, mm -hmm. Tom Congleton's, uh, uh, Kevin, the Royal Books catalogs mm -hmm. are great. You know, things like that. I would and William Reese. All the, I read a lot. I've read a lot. I've read a lot of catalogs. And I, I think they're an amazing. Learn. Yeah. That's how you learn? Absolutely. Yep. So. Yeah. Great teaching in there. Yeah, and then you know, I've also you know now knowing a lot of those people it's I can talk to them about stuff too but in the, at first I would say for as far as mentorship it was just a lot of a lot of reading <laughs> so. it's, it's it is yeah yeah and now it sounds like um, I mean now those those books are catalogs you're reading now they're your peers you probably you know uh, collaborate with them mm -hmm. and, you know yeah. have, have really fluid discussions maybe even buy together yeah um, what are some of the things that su maybe surprised you now that you're that you're in the book business? And since you came in, you know, post internet, mm -hmm. and the uh, or different generations had to have a tipping point where they went over from, you know, print catalog only to using the internet. You right. came in full throttle. Right. You know, you're young. How do how do you how do you use it? Uh, how do I use the internet? The internet. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, uh, I mean, I would say as a cornerstone of my my. I mean, I, I, it makes it possible to do what I do from Vermont, first mm -hmm. of all. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, have, I have access to, uh, you know, I, I, I buy, buy some stuff online. I keep, you know, find out about things that I then travel to. I would, you know, the flow of information is, mm -hmm. is kind of essential. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, and I issue electronic catalogs and have a mailing list and, mm -hmm. you know, correspond with, with uh, you know, my clients and everything. So it's, it's a... Yeah, it's it's a, I would say it's you know, and, and my background kind of was e-commerce, okay. you know, on more of a when I was running a record store, it was a large, you know, large online operation, and then, and then my first the first sort of generalist iteration of my business was more was just you know general nonfiction and stuff, uh, as I sort of started to specialize. So I've, I've been around the internet for <laughs> sort of the whole, yes, the whole duration, time. Um, and it's it's at this point I'm trying to build. It's not that I'm. I still use it a lot. I'm trying to, you know, it's now it's more kind of a phase of building personal relationships, knowing mm -hmm. my customers, knowing, you know, building building relationships. And I think the internet. I mean, it's great. It's a great tool. But you know, you kind of, in this universe, you need both. And that's sort of the function of these shows as well to see people yes. in, in person and everything. Yeah, so. it's a different kind of relationship when you when when a collector uh, or an institution actually puts a face and you know and a whole person with this great material that they may have really been excited by right and even bought and you know pulled the trigger sent that check but when they meet right. the voice behind who's bringing that it really becomes kind of cemented mm -hmm. don't you find yeah definitely yeah and um because you work with such visual material uh, mm -hmm. you know um I'm, I'm wondering if you use any of the other you know facebook Pinterest, Instagram, um, or you, what, what does should. the brand of Auger Down kind of facing outward look like, um, if I was to find it? Yeah, I do um, catalogs. I mean, I would say the brand, it's kind of centered on, on ca catalogs, print, and, and, you know, PDF catalogs. I do, I'm, I'm trying to build my Instagram 
following. It's on the list of things to do. It's an endless list. Um, an endless list. As a solopreneur, I assume, I mean, with yeah. your family, do you also yeah. have any staff helping? Um, Somebody I have, doing those hashtags for you? I have, I have one person very part-time who helps me, but it's basically me, you okay. know, so. Yeah. She's great. She's, you know, she's 30, so she kind of understands Instagram better than I do, but. Right. Um, yeah, so I, you know, a lot of it is me. I mean, I, I uh, you know, I do my own graphic design. I just, I do the whole thing. So it's, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, you know, more help would be nice. It's also nice to have sort of freedom to, you know, yes. do my own thing and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of, that can, that can go both ways too. So. Yeah, I mean, we're, you're st we're stretching, you know, the muscle of, you know, the history and the muscle of, you know, archives and learning all the, about, you know, all the different aspects of 20th and, late 19th century photography, but you also get to flex this creative muscle. It helps right. if you're a creative. Right. It seems like you are, having been you know, in, in arts and history for a while. Mm -hmm. So that creative muscle um, creates the ability for your voice to really be unique. Right. Do you feel like it's important to have a, you know, a very unique voice in the kind of signal to noise yeah. ratio in the trade right now? I do. I mean, I, s I think definitely cur curatorial you know, you want to have a good curatorial sense mm -hmm. uh, while also kind of understanding what the market is, where, you know, what, what people are interested in, what, where the market's headed, what, you know, you kind of, so I, I try to do, I try, I try to be very aware of, you know, the kind of, not climate, but, you know, the kind of climate, yeah. I guess, of, of the temperature of the market. Yeah. Because you know, there are trends that do right. overlap, and then you'll start to see these little crests, and, and right. everybody in a certain larger genre will start to of course crest with that right but that's one thing i think that's so great about the sparish do you find that mm -hmm. you know like i said that snapshot of your very unique thumbprint right within the trade right that really even in a catalog and with logo design can't necessarily right transmit right right exactly and so do you find people surprised by your material drawn in by your material how does that booth presence affect kind of influence those buyers and the relationships yeah I, I would I would say um, I think people you know I mean some people really connect it's, it's like anything you know some people really connect other people it's you know it's a lot of photographs it's a lot of you know things where there's a you know sometimes an idea or a social history c connection between a group of images and if it's people some people see that and it, they connect right away other people okay. it might not or they're not tuned into certain th you know things but yeah I think it's I think it's important to have really important to have your, you know, your kind of vision and, and have a little space that people can yeah. kind of see it and, and talk to you and everything. Yeah, so. it's kind of like a, an exhibit goes up. Yeah. So I would try to work out of your house or something? No, I have an office. Yeah, I, I, I work oh. from home a little bit, but yeah, I have um, I have an office, you know, which is good. good to nice to be able to have that, uh, feel like you have a little bit of sanity when you're home and it's not 24-7. Right. right. Or is it still 24-7? It's... it's it's yeah. I have a three. We have a three-year-old, so it's like oh. it is twenty-four-seven. So yeah. it's great. It and then I, yeah, I do a lot of work at night when he goes to sleep and stuff. So it's a lot of. I would say it's you know the work-life balance is always yeah. tricky, but it's good. My girls grew up with me already being a bookwoman, and so yeah. they would ask in little voices, "Is this person our library, or right. can, I, can I touch it?" You know, and they yeah. knew right away, like ah, not that. You know. Yeah. So. You you've got some you know years under your your belt. You're you're getting you're getting the salt of it. If you were to take uh, the you know right now Marco Pinella Arbor Down, and you were to enter the book trade this moment, how would you do it differently? And what would you tell that I, I, new person? I think I would have tried to work for an ABA dealer earlier on. I see. But you I didn't I didn't know yeah, I didn't know that such a thing existed at the mm -hmm. time. So I would say if I were meant, you know, had advice for someone who was younger, I would say don't be shy about trying to meet the meet someone who you really whose work you really enjoy and trying to work for them, I think is like the most direct way to to kind of get where you want. I mean, I I learned in a very you know, circuitous way by mm -hmm. both by living in, you know, a, Vermont, where I was not, you know, geographically cl close to certain yeah. people, but um, I would say that, yeah, you know, I, 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 people often ask, like, you know, younger younger dealers, um, kind of like, I'm re I'm reluctant to to encourage anyone to to try to do a large online book book operation at this point, just yeah. just given the 
given the you know lack of independence you have, lack of kind of control, you know the amount, the degree to which you're going to get squeezed by these you know Amazon type people. Mm -hmm. So there used to you know the trajectory for me was get in kind of you know you know specialize as I as I learned, and I think if I if I knowing now what I do, I would I would encourage younger people to specialize earlier if they can. I mean, it's good to kind of see what's out there too, mm -hmm. but I, I think that that having a, a clear idea of what you want and trying to t find people who can teach you is, is kind of the... That would be ideal. Yeah. It's not easy. No, it's not easy. At this, I guess peering into this unique galaxy, yeah. Rare, I think, is the person that comes in already with the vision of right. who the firm will be and who they will be and what that voice will be. Right. It does right. have to develop organically, which right. it sounds like it did very, right. very well for you. I think you had sounds like you had a little more of a curatorial vision and a stamp than than many so I think you I feel like you were at a pretty good advantage so yeah I think it that took well thanks yeah yeah it took a little time but yeah I, I kind of you know it also takes time to kind of realize where your where your interests are going to intersect with the market and yeah. and what kind of way you can you can um, keep keep it challenging for yourself mm -hmm. also maintain a, a business and as a photograph dealer do you have problems with people who want to see a scan of your photo? Um, no. I mean, I, I people do. I, I try to scan everything and put high high res, you know, images yeah. up first, and then save myself a lot of a lot of emailing on the on the other end of it. But yeah, people, you know, I I mean, not not doing um, fine photo. You know, most of my photographs are they're not like fine photographs, so it's not like. People are going to be looking at them with a raking light and worried if there's like yeah. a tiny little condition thing. Ge generally, I don't really handle that type of material, so so it's a, there's a little more leeway with with kind of like documentary, you know, type photography. I would say. Yeah, because it's interesting when we work with such unique images. I often kind of consider them they're mine until I sell them, right? Right. Could, sometimes I think I'm going to make that to a T-shirt. Right, like right, just right. Like this image is so great. Yeah. And when you're in a graphic-based kind of a, a of a flavor with your business um, sometimes when people want to scan I think you, you, you don't you don't you don't get this birthday cake shot right, and you know, right, because right. You, you need to buy it to, in order right, to have right. it so yeah because um, once they have it um, right right it's it's I mean I can save an image to my phone and it's mine and I can, right, right. I can have it on Instagram and yeah um, kind of you know appropriating graphic images and right. um, graphic in the sense of being like visual Right. Of, it can be tricky. Have you it can be. You haven't run into any problems. I haven't. I mean, I, de I deal mostly with, you know, I mean, I deal with kind of, I deal mostly with institutional clients, mm -hmm. and I, I don't have a, I haven't run into a lot of issues with, you know, I, I, I would say it's a pretty honed, honed thing. But yeah, I, I should, you know, I, I do see people put putting stamps on their images yeah, and that kind of thing. Yeah, I guess the question I was thinking yeah. of was what about martyr marks? I personally can't stand them. Right. Because it jars my, the, right. you know, falling into the image and letting right. the image really work in me. Yeah, so yeah. You do you not use them? I don't use yeah. them, yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Usually I know the people who are, at, you know, inquiring, of, you know, and, and um, it's, you know, so it's it's been, it's been, it hasn't been much of an issue, I would say. That's awesome. So, Good yeah. to know. As we move into the next, we're almost in the 20s, you know, mm -hmm. and we're saying we're back to the 20s. And we move squarely into the first quarter of the 21st century. Um, knowing what you know about the beginnings of the trade and where you are now, kind of at the cusp of, of, of this, this modern space, what do you think our challenges are as we move as relatively young dealers, as we move into the next chapters of, of our trade? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's, you know, markets evolve and mm -hmm. tastes evolve. And I think the challenge with, I mean, pragmatically, the challenge is, you know, don't don't have too much stuff so that you're not in, so that you're not flexible. You know, having mm -hmm. a business. I mean, you have to you have to be. I think that's a hard thing. Just just as as far as like a, you know, just on the business side of it is don't you know I try to try to kind of be able to ad adapt and not have you know I think it can be hard if you hold a lot of inventory in a certain area and you mm -hmm. you know a lot about it. It can be very hard to admit when things shift. Time and you know, that's yeah, that's a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, especially because there is—it's never clearly delineated. Like things have value. There's, you know, a lot of history, historical books that are still have some value. They're not, they don't know what the value they did, but you don't mm -hmm. want to throw them away. You yeah. know, so you, you know, you, you often find yourself in situations of having to navigate, kind of like opportunity costs. Like, it, is this something that's worth my time? And mm -hmm. 
So I, I would say the challenge is just, you know, as material becomes available, you know, and this is something when I'm advising people I, and I never feel like I have the right answers for them because it's, it's just a hard thing to, you know, tell somebody if, you know, they have a, you know, relative who had some collection and yeah. it's not like this stuff is worthless, but it's, it's not like where things are headed either. So it's, um, I would say that, yeah. Um, I would say the challenge is basically just that, you know, trying to, trying to, trying to evolve with, with changing tastes as well as like having respect to history and, and knowing the right ways to, to deal with, you know, collections and material that, that are important, but not perhaps like your, your important or whatever. So yeah, I don't know. It's, it's interesting to see, it'll be interesting to see kind of how things evolve. So. Um, and I don't really know. I don't, I don't know. None of I don't know. Do. I don't know what what you know tastes will be like in ten years. Or I, I guess I, I try to focus on material I think has some kind of you know historical importance that mm -hmm. I that I can kind of grasp myself and mm -hmm. sort of beyond the media you know and and uh, well, you know hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> There's, yeah. There's another mug saying hope for the best. <laughs> oh, another mug. Yeah. Too, too many mugs right now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for yeah, sharing such you. insightful and kind of multi-layered ideas and responses. Thanks for being with us today. Yeah, thank you. Um, get back, let's get back to the floor and sell some more great stuff. Yes, yeah, thank you. Yes. <laughs>